May the Lord bless all our precious people and friends. And for those of you who are watching online, thanks for sharing. Thanks for making a godly difference. This morning, I have a very, as always, but very important, I would say, a very relevant word. And uh, I believe it's going to be a great blessing to you and your family. Make sure that you share the word with all your loved ones. When I don't understand, say this with me, when I don't understand, it doesn't matter who you are. Sometimes in life, we get to a place where we say, Lord, I really don't understand. Come on, let's all be honest this morning. Don't look so holy. Just be holy. <laughs> Many times we say, Lord, we don't understand. For example, why is it that sometimes even good people, let's call it good people, Christians have to go through tough times? Come on, this word is going to bless you tremendously. Why is bad things happening to good people? This morning there's maybe a parent and say, why my child, Lord, maybe a child who has cancer. Maybe you've lost a child or a loved one and you say, Lord, I don't understand. Eventually, all of us uh, need to get out of this life. Are you all with me? We are on our way to heaven. Can you say amen? amen. But when we talk about a premature death, when we talk about a child, when we talk about accidents and stuff that we really don't understand. I mean, you talk about a parent this morning that is crying over a a, a, maybe a son or a daughter who's rebellious. Maybe a drug addicted. You see? And there's stealing. And there's all kinds of bad things happening in the house. A parent crying this morning and say, Lord, but I've been serving you throughout my life. I want you to understand that Many times, even good people, Christian people going through difficult seasons. So get that teaching of two weeks ago, uh, where I, I spoke on bless your season. Now this morning, when I don't understand, maybe you're going through a tough time, you say, I, I've lost my job. Many people have lost their jobs through, through this pandemic. Many people have lost their businesses. Many people have died because of this COVID-19. When I don't understand. I think about this morning about a, let's say, a sister in Christ, a lady that say, just one morning when we woke up, my husband told me, he doesn't love me anymore. And he just left. People going through divorce. Think about people who are going through an affair. Doesn't matter if it's the husband or the wife. And people say, but Lord, I've been serving you. I don't understand. Think about bad circumstances. Parents that say, but I've raised my kids in the house of the Lord, but they don't want to serve God. They sit at home. They are actually in rebellion. You just don't want to call it that way. That's what the word says. What's going to happen later in life? They don't want to come to church. They don't want to serve God. When I don't understand. So all of us are going through seasons in life. 
all of us sometimes get to a place where we have questions. And I want to teach you something profound. When, 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 when maybe it's a loved one or a family member or your neighbor or your friend going through a tough time, don't try to give them quick answers. Don't do it. You know what's going to happen? They won't talk to you again. Because you don't stand in their shoes. Don't give people quick answers, quick fixes. Rather say, I'll be praying for you. Come on. I am there for you. If you need me, I'll be praying for you. Can you say amen? amen. When I don't understand, just, just be honest. Even to yourself. Maybe some of you went through stuff that you don't understand. Or you're going through stuff that you don't understand. I want you to know that there's many people this morning going through tough times. You're not alone. But I want to bring you hope. Our God really does understand. Can you say amen? Come on, Jesus is our hope, the hope of glory. And He is with you. Can you say amen? Now the Bible says in Psalms, I want you to, to check this out and I want you to memorize this. Psalms 34, 18 says, The Lord is close to the broken heart and saves those who are crushed in spirit. The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. Come on, even the righteous, even the child of God, sometimes go through difficult times. And sometimes we really want to be spiritual. And thank God for those of us, there are many men of God here who are spiritual. I can say this with confidence. But many times you, you want to you wanna be so spiritual, but to be honest, in your heart you don't understand why certain things have happened. I think of many people in the Bible, and the Lord spoke to me about them. I think about Joseph. I'll just write this down. I mean, Joseph that was thrown, I mean, into a pit. By his own brothers. Just imagine this. If you have brothers like that, you don't need enemies. They've thrown him into a pit and then he was sold to the Midianites. And then he ended up in a foreign country and he was in jail, in and out jail for approximately 13 plus years. How many times would you say that Joseph as a young boy, a young son, said to himself, I don't understand what's happening now. In fact, I was my dad's favorite. I had so much favor with him. Come on, check this out. I'm talking about when good people, I'm talking about when Christian people, are you, are you with me? I'm talking about the righteous. Now you've got to define that for yourself. The righteous, meaning doing the right thing, going through difficult stuff. And many times people want to give a quick fix and say, yeah, it's because you have sin in your life. Yeah, it's because you did this and that. And sometimes maybe it is. But listen, don't give a, a quick answer because you don't know. Thank God He is the judge. Come on. Don't condemn people. Because maybe in a week time or in a month's time, you're going through a tough time. What then? Hmm? What are you going to say then? The wheel is turning. Maybe you're on top this morning. Thank God for that. But maybe in a week or six, you'll be under. And then you need the church to pray for you as well. When I don't understand. When the righteous going through tough times. The righteous person may have many troubles. But the good news. But the Lord delivers him from them all. 
But maybe this morning you are like Joseph and you said, Lord, I don't understand. I've been the favorite. I had favor with my father. And now all of a sudden, I'm in prison. A slave. That's what he was. And we know eventually, God promoted him to prime minister. And he had to go through that because God used him to bless the people of God. And I'm here to tell you, maybe you are going through a tough time because you don't know God is about to promote you, to bless your family, to be a blessing in the church. Come on, in the community, wherever you are. So hold on. Come on, help is on the way. Can you say amen? Sometimes we just don't understand. And I want to give you a word of wisdom. It's a gift. The word of wisdom is a gift. Don't overthink all the stuff that you don't understand. I'm prophesying to many here. Don't overthink those things that you don't understand. In Afrikaans we say, Mwini jou kop breek nie. Don't break your head. There are, there are things that we don't understand. The word of God says, even the righteous, even the the person who serves God goes through tough times. But he's, he's close to us. He's close to the broken hearted. Don't give that quick answers anymore. Stop doing that. Because you think you're clever. Watch out. Be careful. Maybe you are next in line going through tough times. Let's rather, come on, bear one another's burdens. Let's, let's pray for one another. Amen. Let's be there for one another. I think about David. He was anointed as king. Did you know when he was 17 years old? 17. The prophet anointed him and said, you'll be the next king. The king of Israel. But he only started reigning as king when he was 30. And for the next 13 years, he had to go through hell. And back. I mean, and, and, and the king, by the name of Saul, wanted David it. And so when you, when you read the Psalms, it's very interesting to see how David sometimes described his own life. Just read the Psalms. Let me give you good advice. Over and over and over. You can read other passages in the Word. Read the Psalms over and over. It's very relevant for us. Then you can see even a good man, a man after God's own heart, went through winter seasons as well. Went through difficult times. You are not alone. But what must I do when I don't understand? What should I do when I go through a season where I don't understand? Lord, why? Why is this thing happening in my family or with my kids or in my marriage or in my finances or even in South Africa? Lord, we don't understand. Even the mighty Apostle Paul says, we won't understand everything here in this life. But there will come a day where we will understand everything. Think about Job. The Bible says there was nobody like Job. No, no, no. I want you to listen to this. The Lord himself said there's no one like Job on the earth. Imagine God says that about you. There's no one as holy. Nobody as Job. All over the world. Nobody like him. And the next moment there was the devil. He hates people. And he said, yeah, I can, I can understand why Job loves you so much. In my own words, just to explain to you and why he serves you so well. It's because you protect him from all sides. You bless him. And the Bible says Job was, was so rich, so wealthy. He was the most wealthiest person in the East. Think about that. And then the devil says, but 
I understand why he serves you. Because your hand is upon him. Just remove your hand. Just take off your hand. And then we will see. You know what the devil said. He will curse you. And it, it's like. This is a great revelation. It's like God accepted this challenge. And said. Okay devil. You can do with him whatever you want. But just spare his life. You cannot take his life. It's like God said, I will show you that my son Job will stay with me. He will serve me even in a difficult time. <laughs> this is a great word. A great word for, for all of us. Are you willing to serve God in difficult times? Or are you only willing to serve him when it goes well? Because we see it all the time. Here's all the pastors. We deal with people. Then they go through a tough time. You never see them in church. Now we go through a tough time, but aren't you supposed then to be in church? Don't you think that's the best to be in church when it's not going well? Come on, to sit under the word of God, to be in the presence of God, to be with your brothers and sisters. Hmm? We get people, they say, no, they, 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 they too bad. They're going through a tough time. They can't come to church. It's like you say, you are so overweight, you can't go to the gym. Some of you take time to get it. Don't you go to the gym because you are overweight. Hello. Now because there's some guys with six packs. I have one but some of them have six. And there's ladies and all the curves and all this stuff. And now you stay away because phew, they look too good. That's how people think. The church is for everybody. Come on, the church is for people to be restored. Can you say amen? For people to get healed. It's like a spiritual hospital. Amen. Don't say because you don't understand, you don't serve God, you stay away. That's what the devil wants. He wants to isolate you. And when he isolates you, listen to me, he will destroy you. You know, when we bry, you think about all that hot coals. Doesn't matter who you are, you can be as red or white, you can be on fire. Just remove that coal, that briquette, just remove it from the others. And it's just a matter of time. Then that coal is dead the church was and is God's idea we all need him and we all need one another don't isolate yourself because you're going through a tough time we are the body of Christ come on and where there's unity God will command his blessing now we all are coming through a tough time with this pandemic. And yet there's still people who, who use that as an excuse. Think about Paul going through a tough time. I mean, he was in heaven. He says, it's actually difficult for me to describe what I saw. <laughs> Sometimes when I hear people, they, when they describe heaven so easily... You know, then I think, ah, uh, I wonder if you've been there, if you've really been there. Because this mighty apostle says, you know, it's actually difficult to describe even. I can't even tell you in words what I saw. It's too big. It's too phenomenal. So always stay with the word, then you, then you are safe. Now you get people, they, 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 they read a book. And there's something else and then they make the book higher than the word of God. Are you crazy? The word of God is priority. Hmm? So when you read a book, there's just good advice for some people here. Always measure whatever you hear and read by the word of God. And Paul went through a tough time and he said, Yo, all of a sudden I'm, I'm, I get attacked here by a demon. 
It's like he's, it's like a fist of, of, of a demon. And he says, Lord, please remove this. Just take it away. It's like he was punched by this demon. And we really don't know exactly what it was. Some people say his eyes, some people say his head, but surely it was, I would say, a physical condition, but we, we don't know. The point is just he was attacked. And then he said he prayed to the Lord three times, just remove this thing. You talk about an apostle. Praying and say, Lord, have mercy, remove it. And God just answered him the following. My grace is sufficient for you. He didn't remove it. And he did not answer him concerning that thing. He just said, my grace is enough. <laughs> and sometimes we say, Lord, we don't understand. And let me prophesy. Come on, take the word of the Lord. The Lord says to all of us, my grace is sufficient for all of you. Come on, for everybody. When you don't understand, just remember his grace is enough. When you don't get an answer and you'll get to that place, trust me, you don't need to be a prophet to know the following. You will get many times at a place where you say, Lord, I don't hear yeah, what's happening, what's going on. You know why? He wants you to seek Him on a daily basis. Because if you would know everything concerning your future, you would stop seeking the face of God. Oof, that's a great revelation. That's why you need to pick up the manna every day. That's why you need to seek his face when? Every day. What must I do? Four things. Now write this down. Put it on your phone. Four things. Stay close to God when you don't understand. Don't turn your back on him. You know, there's many people, they, they turn their backs on God when they go th through tough times. I mean, it's, it's absolutely crazy. Where would you go without Him? Where would you go without Him? And now you get people, they say, Pastor, I don't understand. And, and, and my heart shoo, is crying with people. When they're going through tough times. I mean, you talk about... People going through tough times, sometimes death and sickness and stuff that you can't even imagine that you can go through. That's why you don't give a quick answer. You just, you just pray for them. You just walk with them. You just love them. That's what we do every day. Hmm? What do you tell a daddy or a mommy who lost their, 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 their child? Or somebody who's addictive. And I mean, you talk about chaos. What do you say? So yes, what I will say. And this is revelation coming from the Holy Spirit. Stay close to God when you don't understand. Don't run from Him. Run to Him. Say this with me. Stay close to God. And you will see many people in these days, the Bible warned us about it. Check this out. Many people will turn their backs on God. They turn their backs on the church. They blame the past and they blame the church and they blame everybody playing the blame game all the time. Test yourself. Don't be like that. Stop playing the blame game if it's going tough in your life and start repeating. Painting. Can you say amen? Start praying. Come on, start forgiving. No, pastor, we can't come to church because we got hurt. Are you for real? Hmm? We all get hurt in this life. Come on. And all of us, there was a time, doesn't matter who you are, where you hurt somebody else. 
So that's why we need to forgive. When? Now. Every day. Father, forgive us as we forgive others. Imagine unforgiveness will take people to hell. You want me to say that again? You say, but I love the Lord. I believe you. The Bible says, if we don't forgive, then God will not forgive. If God doesn't forgive you, what does it mean? It means the heavens are close. What must I do when I don't understand? Young people, listen. Stay close to God. Pray again. Trust Him again. Read the Bible again. Because many times when people feel so disappointed, they say, Lord, I don't understand. Then they back off. There's many people, trust me now. They're going through a tough time and then they run away. And the devil says, that's exactly where I want you to be. Because if he can isolate you one more time, listen, write this down. He will destroy you. You think you are strong this morning, but you are here under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. You are covered by the blood of the Lamb. Can you say amen? There's somebody praying for you every day. We call it covering in a church. Don't run away. Don't run away from your problems. Run to Jesus. Walk by faith. Write this down. When I don't understand, what must I do? Stay close to God. Walk by faith because the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. So at the moment things don't look well, but we, we, we walk by faith, not by sight. Come on. We must say, Father, we trust you again for breakthrough, for miracles. We trust you for that child, that child of mine. He will serve the Lord. Come on, that daughter will serve the Lord. Come on, my marriage will be restored. Whatever your, your problem is, my finances, it will, it will be restored. God will make a way. God will give me a job again. Come on, God will bless my business if you stay close to Him. Now, thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, the Bible says, He is close to the broken heart. Listen to a revelation. Godly wisdom. What should we do when we go through a tough time? The Bible says, He is close to to you when you're going through troubles what should we do when we don't understand stay close to him <sighs> draw near to me says the lord then i will draw near to you it will not help you to blame god there's many people this morning sitting at at home, even in bars, listen to me, right now, blaming God. It's not him. There's a, an enemy. The Bible says, the thief came to what? Kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus said, but I came so that you can have life and have it more abundantly. The devil hates you. He hates me. Jesus is the answer. Run to Him. Walk by faith. Come on, the Christian life is all about walking by faith. You say, I don't understand. But God does. Many times we don't understand. What should we do? Keep on walking. Oh, that's good. Keep on serving the Lord even when you don't understand. Keep on walking by faith. Don't back off. That's what the devil wants. The third thing that we should do when we don't understand is stick to what you understand. Oh, this is very good. I remember one time I was a young man. Started preaching and my, my daddy, my father who's in heaven now for many, many years, he told me, son, there's many times things that we don't understand, but stick to what you do understand. 
And that was a great revelation. Because what do we understand? We do understand that the word, come on, is the truth. Can you say amen? We do understand that we serve a good, good father. The Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from above. How God is a good God. Come on, how Jesus saves and heals and delivers and restores. Do you understand that? Yes, I do. So when you go through stuff that you don't understand, stay with what you understand. Yes. Stick to that. Walk by faith. You see what the devil wants you to believe is that God is not close to you anymore. That God doesn't listen when you pray. That's what I said Wednesday night at our prayer meeting. You should join the prayer meetings Wednesday evening 6 o'clock. I said, the Lord Jesus himself said, pray continually. Pray, pray, pray without losing heart. Because if you start losing heart, you won't pray anymore. Because then you get to a place where you say, mm, prayer doesn't work. And then it's when people don't come to church anymore. They don't serve him anymore. That's exactly what the devil wants, wants you to believe. He wants to make God, listen to this revelation, a liar. But he's the liar. You have to stay and stick to what you understand. Walk by faith. When you go through a season where you don't understand, say, Father, thank you. Your word says, you are my provider, Jehovah Jireh. Amen. Thank you that you will provide in all my needs according to your riches in glory. My God is just good. That's what's coming out of my mouth. When I don't understand. And then the last point, revelation that I want to share with you is, Watch your mouth. When you don't understand, uh, just put it on the board, please. Watch your mouth. Because when we go through tough times, you can be honest now, check yourself. Most of the times, negative words are coming out of you. People curse their season. Go and get that teaching. They speak evil. They speak negative. And the Lord spoke to me and said, when you, when you go through a season where you don't understand, just watch your mouth. Don't blame him. Don't blame anybody else. Come on, we all have 24 hours in a day. And the day will come where we will be standing before the living God alone. Watch your mouth. Watch your words. And the Bible says when Job went through this tough time, I mean, he lost everything, all his children. He became sick. The devil attacked his body. He lost everything, his whole business, in one day, in a couple of hours. The Bible says he had the most beautiful daughters. And the devil killed them all in one moment. But yet, Job did not sin with his mouth. Isn't that extraordinary? Extraordinary. Many times people say, Pastor, I feel like Job. Really? Go and read the book again. Just go and read it again. Then you come and talk again. But yet, he did not sin with his mouth. He did not sin against God. He did not blame him. Yes, he was disappointed. Come on, we all go through disappointments. We all go through tough times. But when you don't understand, watch your mouth. Rather say nothing. And trust God to get through the season. Amen. Come on, bless your season again. Bless your husband again. Bless your wife again. 
What is coming out of your mouth in, in this season? I feel sorry for you when you say, I don't understand. I'm really going through a tough time. My husband left me or my wife left me or my kids are in rebellion or whatever the case might be or somebody is sick or somebody has cancer. We really feel sorry for you. But this is the word of God. Stay close to him. Don't turn your back on him. Then the devil will destroy you in one moment. Walk by faith. When you speak, let it be words of faith. No negative words, no evil words. Amen. Rather praise Him. Rather worship Him in the storm. And I know it's not easy. Okay, so and stick to what you understand. Just praise Him. Just praise Him. Just put praise and worship music in your ears. Even last night, man, thank God for technology. And I, I put songs in my ears, in my heart. I just worship Him. I just focus on Him. I just sit at His feet for long times. I just walk with Him. When you don't understand, just take the focus off. Of those things that you don't understand. And put the focus on Him and say... This is what I understand, that Jesus is Lord. There's nobody like Him. Yes, Jesus loves me. Can you say amen? Yes, God is for me. Yes, God is with me. Because the Bible says the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. And forgive those who've sinned against you. Those who don't like you. Don't tell them, but I don't like you either. Because then you like them. Mm, that was good. And when your family say, I don't like you. Don't tell them, you know, the feeling is mutual. <laughs> Pray for them. <laughs> let's be the salt of the earth. Come on, let's be the light of the world. Let's forgive. Watch your mouth. You're trusting God for a new job. Speak it. Pray it. Declare it. You say, Pastor, I've been doing it for a long time. Keep on going. Don't stop now. You will get what you say. Hallelujah. Do you enjoy the word of God? Please share this word with all your loved ones. You will be a great blessing to them. This word will be a great blessing. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the wonderful word. Thank you that you are close to those who are broken hearted. Thank you that you heal us, Lord. Thank you for delivering your people. Sometimes we go through so many troubles, but you said, you promised us that you will deliver us from all of that. Help us Lord to, to stand firmly on your word. To walk by faith. Even in seasons where we don't understand. Help us just to stay close to you. I bless your people Lord. And may this word be such a blessing. May many, many lives be transformed and changed. In Jesus name. Amen.